In the sublime object of ideology, Zizek begins by resurrecting the teachings of Louis Althusser, emphasizing that these ideas have been suppressed within intellectual circles. Althusser's assertion that a certain division, a misrecognition, defines the human condition is highlighted by Zizek. According to Althusser, human culture is shaped by structural mechanisms, producing the effect of subject as ideological misrecognition. Subject formation involves the misrecognition of ideology, a process wherein the subject recognizes itself as the addressee in the calling up of the ideological cause. Zizek contends that without these fissures and misrecognitions, culture itself would be impossible, as all culture is a reaction formation attempting to navigate and cultivate the inherent imbalances and antagonisms. Zizek aligns with Laclau and Mouffe's paradoxical argument that democracy can only thrive by exploiting social antagonisms and cultural divisions. He warns against attempts to completely overcome these antagonisms, as that could lead to totalitarianism. He proposes a mutual reinterpretation of Hegel and Lacan to revive Marxist criticism of ideology. Zizek argues that Hegel, often misunderstood, provides a powerful criticism of totalizing ideas, while Lacan offers language and approaches to unveil the ideological disguises of social antagonisms. In the first chapter, Zizek draws a fundamental homology between Marx and Freud, focusing on their interpretative procedures regarding commodities and dreams. Both thinkers shift attention to the form why certain processes assume specific forms. For Freud, the form of a dream disguises a third element, an unconscious desire not expressible in normal language. Similarly, for Marx, the commodity form conceals an unconscious element that emanates from the form itself, not its labor content. This abstraction, inherent in the commodity form, makes abstract thinking possible, influencing the very foundation of modern philosophy the transcendental subject. Zizek argues that this abstraction, or the symbolic order, invades our subjective world, breaking the dualism between people's thoughts and objective experiences. The symbolic order provides forms of thought, and activities, from trade to philosophy, are based on a blindness to this third element, the unconscious revealed through the form, offering ready-to-use solutions. As a result, Zizek proposes a reinterpretation of ideology, asserting that it is not merely a false consciousness or an illusory representation of reality. Instead, he contends that reality itself should be conceived as inherently ideological, a social reality where the participants are unaware of its essence. This essence, the social effectivity, necessitates non-knowledge among individuals regarding what they are truly doing. Contrary to the notion of a post-ideological society, Zizek argues that even when people acknowledge that their perception of reality is shaped by ideological illusions, there exists a double illusion. Consequently, he challenges the idea that cynical distance, or ironic detachment, serves as a complete escape from the structuring power of ideological fantasy, emphasizing that individuals remain engaged in these structures, even when not taking them seriously. The Marxist analysis of commodities introduces a fresh perspective on the opposition between persons and things. While individuals may have abandoned many medieval beliefs, commodities themselves seem to embody these beliefs, functioning as if social relations between things are infused with the remnants of past beliefs superstitions, and metaphysical mystifications. 
Zizek underscores that belief is not confined to a purely mental state, but is materialized in effective social activity, supporting the fantasy that regulates social reality. Returning to Althusser's ideological state apparatuses, Zizek explores their connection with forms and mechanisms of ideological interpellation. Ideological state apparatuses internalize themselves in subjects, generating the effects of ideological belief and subjectivation. However, he notes that ISAs never fully integrate into subjects, leaving a residue of traumatic irrationality. This unresolved surplus, this senseless traumatism, becomes the very condition for the unconditional authority of the law. This resonates with late Soviet experiences where ideology seemed alienated from the population, yet maintained its legitimacy. Zizek extends this analysis, arguing that ideology is not a dreamlike escape from reality, but a fantasy construction supporting the very fabric of social reality. Ideological fantasy serves as a necessary underpinning of reality, concealing an insupportable, real, impossible kernel conceptualized as antagonism by Laclau and Mouf, a traumatic social division that cannot be symbolized. In contrast to the predominant Marxist perspective, which views the ideological gaze as partial, overlooking the totality of social relations, Zizek aligns with Lakin, seeing ideology as a totality aimed at effacing the traces of its own impossibility. The ideological field effectively ensures the success of its calls for obedience and sacrifice, simply for their own sake, by connecting various floating signifiers. These elements, initially fluid, are brought together into a cohesive field through the intervention of a specific nodal point. This nodal point functions to quell these signifiers, arresting their sliding and solidifying their meaning. While ideological elements may initially be fluid and malleable, the process of quilting integrates them into the structured network of meaning that defines ideology.